Hello, this is chapter three, video number three. In the last video, we started to discuss measures of spread. We talked about your range and we also talked about IQR. Well, this video, we are gonna go ahead and talk about standard deviation. And we're actually gonna talk about two separate standard deviations, your sample standard deviation and then also your population standard deviation. So we are going with our uh, example that we had in the past two videos, we're going to go ahead and talk about hours slept last night. Now, I know that my mean is 7.8 hours, uh, but I want to talk about how spread out this is. Uh, so this is a nice normal distribution, a normal distribution. And with a normal distribution, you can put your mean in the center. So our mean for this is 7.8 hours of sleep. That is our center. Uh, but I do want to talk about how spread out this is. How spread out is this data? Now, according to the empirical rule, we would expect about 68% to be within one standard deviation, 95% of all values to be within two standard deviations, and then three standard deviations, that is 99.7 values. Uh, should be within two standard or within three standard deviations. But how do we calculate a standard deviation? Well, uh, this is a job for a calculator. We can do it by hand, but it's very, very tedious. It's essentially subtracting six minus seven point eight, squaring it to avoid negatives, adding all those up, dividing by a certain value. It's a very tedious process. So what we are going to do is we are going to allow a calculator to do the work. All right, so here we go. We can calculate this using standard deviation in Desmos. Remember, this is desmos.com slash calculator. So STDEV, standard deviation, that is the command for standard deviation, STDEV. Uh, and you can go ahead and type in your values. We have six, eight, nine, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, ten. Um, and I'm actually gonna throw out 16 for now, but we will go ahead and throw that in here in a bit. So right now our standard deviation is 1.31 hours, 1.32 hours. Uh, so here we go. Uh, so our standard deviation is 1.3, I'm just gonna say 1.3 hours. All right, so where does this fit in with our model? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add these together. So let's go in the positive direction first. Let's go ahead and go with our positive standard deviation. Well, one standard deviation above is going to be 9.1 hours, 9.1 hours. I, yep, okay, uh, adding again plus 1.3, plus 1.3. Uh, this is going to be 10.4 hours. 10.4 hours. And then finally, three standard deviations above is going to be 11.7 hours. 11.7 hours. So if you are three standard deviations above the mean in sleep, you're getting 11.7 hours of sleep or more. Now let's go ahead and go in the opposite direction. If I were to take 7.8 minus 1.3, now I'm at 6.5 hours, 6.5. All right, do it again, minus another 1.3, we are at 5.2 hours, so 5.2 hours. And then finally, one more standard deviation below would be 3.9 hours. All right, now typically we say that anything outside of two standard deviations is unusual. Let's go ahead and figure out where all of these people fit in. Where do all of these people fit in? All right, well, six hours, uh, they would be somewhere in here in this range. Eight hours, they would be in this range. Nine hours, they would also be in this range. Another nine hours, another eight hours. Seven hours would be right here. Six hours is right here. Another seven hours, another eight hours. And then finally, a 10 hour would be over here. 
uh, we really did not have that many people. Let's say out of our 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven out of our 10 um, are within one standard deviation, which makes sense. We're supposed to be around 68%. We've got three that are within two standard deviations. And really, there's nobody that remarkable in this group that is sleeping well above average or well below average. So our standard deviation helps us figure out this distribution, this distribution, uh, what percentages should be in each. And we are going to do a few example problems of how to calculate these in a moment, but I just, this video is just to get us used to standard deviation. Now, let's say that we were able, instead of taking a sample, let's say that we were able to take a full population, our full population. We knew that this was every single teenager that I wanted to sample for my population. Um, well, this is going to change our standard deviation um, just slightly. If we have a population, simply add a P right there. And notice that that does decrease our standard deviation. Um, with a sample standard deviation, we haven't really, we don't have everybody in the entire population. So we give a little bit of extra wiggle room right there. We give some wiggle room for the ones that we don't know. But if it's a population, when you do your calculation, um, you will have a P in there, and then you will type in all of those values. So when you're doing your my math lab or when you're doing your homework if it's a sample just use standard deviation but if it says hey this is our population calculate the standard deviation if it says population make sure you add that p in there to adjust your standard deviation